Watching since this is the first time in American history that a president has faced, former president has faced criminal charges. Joining us this morning is attorney and former prosecutor Marie Pereira with some insight on this legal case against the former president. So good morning, Marie. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So Marie, there was a lot to unpack with what Mr. Takapina just said. I want to get your reaction on the statements made by Joe Takapina right there about the case not being legally sufficient and that the misdemeanors pass the statute of limitations. A lot of legal jargon here, but can you help us kind of navigate what exactly was said right there? First of all, it's not unusual for defense attorneys to come out of the gate claiming that the case is built on nothing and it's trash and that it's not legally sufficient. What he's saying is because it's the misdemeanor that it, it there's a statute of limitations which basically says if the event took place more than two years, then you really shouldn't be trying to prosecute it because it's time barred. But we don't know what the charges are, so mm -hmm. he can't really be commenting on statutes of limitations when they have not unsealed the indictment. Mm. He has not enough information to make a decision like that. Yeah, they do have a lot to say. I mean, here's the thing. So Trump's attorney also claims that the Federal Elections Commission and the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District didn't uncover any wrongdoing. So that begs the question, does that mean that Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg actually uncovered possibly new information about wrongdoing? Well, the Federal Election Committee is an independent agency and it enforces campaign financing laws. It monitors prohibitions and it oversees funding. It is not a law enforcement body. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to investigate and report crimes, suspected crimes to law enforcement, but it cannot bring criminal charges against a person who violates their laws. You know, so Ms. Pereira, let me ask you this, because everyone's curious about how everything will unfold tomorrow at the arraignment, right? That's when we're expected to have all of this unsealed and actually know what those charges are. But in the meantime, before we get to that, help us understand the difference between the misdemeanor and what raises this to a felony charge, right? Because there are certain things that make it a felony. Well, falsifying business records is a misdemeanor, but mm -hmm. it could be elevated to a felony if the falsification was intentional, knowing, and orchestrated to conceal a second crime. In this case, the second crime would be the violation of election law. A misdemeanor is a crime. If you're found guilty of that crime, you can serve a year or less than a year mm -hmm. in jail. A felony, you can serve up to a lifetime in prison, not jail. So there's a big difference there in terms of the amount of incarceration that's associated with each crime. So le let's lay this out then for folks that aren't really familiar with the court process. What actually is gonna happen tomorrow? And will he go through you know, the, the protocol that all, all uh, uh, suspects go through, uh, going through the mug shots, the fingerprinting? That type of thing. Absolutely. He's flying in from Mar a Lago. He's going to most likely report to a precinct. He's going to be fingerprinted. There will be mud shots mug shots taken and they probably will do an FBI background check on him to check for warrants like any other person that's accused of committing a crime. Now he may not be handcuffed because after all he is Donald Trump, mm -hmm. but he may be because they may treat him like any other defendant in order to avoid people saying that he's getting privilege they're not going to treat him any worse because they don't want to be accused of weaponizing the system against him. But he will see a judge. They will then unseal the indictment, read off all the charges, all the allegations in the indictment. He will plead guilty or not guilty, and they probably will not ask for any bail or anything like that. He'll be released on his own recognizance, and then they will set a motion schedule. And I promise you that his lawyers are going to make that motion to dismiss mm -hmm. based on a number of grounds. It's an omnibus motion, and they're going to say it's legally insufficient. The grand jury proceedings were defective. It's time barred. Maybe even in the interest of justice, it should be dismissed. And the judge is going to have to make a decision. The prosecutors are going to have an opportunity to, re to respond. Yeah. And then it's on the calendar. It's, yeah. it's a process. Yeah, and, 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 and a lot of maybes and a lot of what ifs and delay, delay, delay. This could very well, if it does go to trial, 
be smack dab in the middle of a presidential campaign in 2024. But let's go with what we do know, right? The former president has said that after this all proceeds tomorrow, he's going to actually address the issue himself, but do so from Florida in Mar-a-Lago. So if he is released on his own recognizance, we always hear those terms of flight risk and so on. Is he allowed to go back to Florida? Absolutely, he's allowed to go back to Florida. As long as he shows up for the adjourned dates, he's allowed to go back to Florida. They're not going to ask him to surrender a passport or anything like that. Donald Trump is not a flight risk. They're releasing him on his own recognizance. Mm. And as long as he shows up in court on the dates that he's supposed yeah. to, there will be no problems. It's not like people won't recognize him, right? <laughs> all right, Attorney Marie Pereira, thanks again for all your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.